my word. Good morning. We're all getting a little bit older and a little bit stiffer and a little less flexible. So what can we do about it? I mean, we're not hitting the ball as far. Our handicap is inevitably rising. What on earth can we do about it? Now in this video, I'm going to use Neville, my friend Neville, as an example. And I'm going to be quoting some famous names. The first one is Harvey Pennick. And if you haven't read his books, then you really need to go and buy his books and read them. They're like little paragraphs, little parables, little stories about players. He taught Ben Crenshaw and Tom Kite, so he knows what he's talking about. And he was a teacher for decades and he taught a lot of old people. One of his little stories was uh, an older golfer coming in. He said, um, I'm not hitting the ball as far as I used to. I've lost my backswing. I can't make a big backswing anymore. And that's true. As you get older, you can't make a big backswing. But Harvey Pennick said, it's not the backswing that hits the ball. It's he says, falling over. It's the follow through, a full, complete follow through. That's what you're losing when you lose distance. Now, Harvey said, golf muscles aren't for sale, so you must earn them. The one thing he suggested was a 20 ounce golf club. That's mighty heavy. Now I don't have a 20 ounce golf club. I've got this thing, it's called a Tempo Trainer. They've got a variety of names, but the one thing is, is it's very heavy. Now you can use this as a speed stick, quite simply. Swing this heavy thing as hard as you can. But Harvey doesn't say that. Harvey says, swing this in control. And this momentum, this weight, will help you get through. See, this is what we're looking for. We're looking for a follow through. That's complete with the belt buckle facing the target. You see, you lose speed when your finish is a bit and you can only get to here and your belt buckle is still pointing way right of target. Now, Lee Trevino had an answer in one of his videos on YouTube. He says, draw the right foot back to get the right hip out of the way so you can make a bigger backswing. And he's right. If I draw, I'm not even in the picture. So if I draw this right foot back, then I can certainly turn away from the ball better and I can make a bigger backswing. There's only one problem with drawing the right foot back, is you create a wall out of the left side of your body. That is very difficult to get past. See, so when I draw the right foot back about five or six inches, I can certainly turn away but trying to get through this left side is incredibly difficult. And this is what my friend Neville is doing. He had a lesson last year and he was taught to draw that right foot back. But you make a wall out of the left side of your body that is difficult to get past to that full follow through. So you lose speed because you can't complete your swing you've lost speed. Yeah, you've, you've got a big backswing now, but you've lost speed. The better thing to do is with your feet, is turn the trailing foot out to two o'clock. If you turn that toe out, then you will get the swing without building a wall out of your left side. And the trouble with building a wall out of the left side is you now have a two-way miss. The first miss is where you can't get through it your belt buckle is still pointing right, and that's where the ball goes, out there to the right. The second issue is the momentum of the club head, 
when the body stops turning, the club head wraps over. And then you've got this low hook into the left rough. And because there's no height on it, because you've reduced the loft of your driver, instead of you hitting your 190 yard drive, you hit 140 yards into the left rough. Now, if you go back to the rolls of Monmouth video, you'll see Neville hitting both of those shots. Now, it doesn't matter if you do, you know, if you, if you draw this right foot back and close your stance and you turn your seven iron into a six iron and it comes out lower and it runs a bit, that doesn't matter. But it make, matters a hell of a lot with a driver when you've only got 10 or 11 degrees to start with and you turn it into seven degrees and it's going into the left rough. It's not running out from the left rough. So what's the answer to our stiffness? Now I had a motorcycle accident in 1990. I was hit head on by a car who was on the wrong side of the road. Since then I have had a stiff neck, stiff upper back. I've had 34 years in an ill-fitting office chair, so I get the stiff lower back. I know all about stiffness. I know all about pain. I'm in pain now, just stood here. I will be in pain in the round of golf this afternoon and if I sit down in the bar afterwards for an hour I might not be able to get out of that chair without screaming. So what is the answer? So what can we do? Well we go back to Harvey Pennick and his 20 ounce golf club and we earn ourselves some golf muscles. So you can swing this quite slowly it not only helps with rhythm, tempo, timing, whichever word you want to use, it also helps stretch you out. Another exercise you can do at home, you can do this in the living room watching the golf on TV. So stick your left hand in your left pocket and simply turn and hold. Turn and hold. Then go the other way, put your right hand in your right pocket grip your imaginary club and go to a full follow, follow, a full follow through even. Turn and hold, finish on your toe like you would in a normal golf swing. Turn this belt buckle to your target. Turn it to your living room wall while you're watching the telly. So stretching is so important. But there is another thing that you can do. And this is the opposite of what a lot of teachers teach. And that's just stand a little open. Let me try and show you what I mean with a real golf club. So if I stand right foot back, as people are being taught, and a strong grip and a strong club face, I struggle to get through. In fact, it's quite a strain on my lower back to get through. Now, if I start again, and I move this leading foot back an inch, inch and a half, get that left hip moving out the way, there's considerably less resistance in my body to making a full swing. What do you do if you're chipping? you stand open. Why do you stand open? You stand open to get this left hip out of the way and then you can swing down the line. It works perfectly as well with a five iron and your driver and everything else in the bag. If you are a fraction open, this hips out of the way, which allows the arms to come through with some speed that you lost and then you finish complete and your belt buckle's facing the target. Now you've got your speed back, you've got your distance back, and more importantly, you've got some height back. Now you've probably been taught, because so many pros teach, a draw. Well, you can still draw with your left foot two inches back. I'm not taking it as far back as they teach with this kind of like closed stance. I'm just moving it back an inch two inches, just enough room to give my arms to pass. And Patrick Harrington says in one of his videos, 
when you get older and you can't turn as well and you can't fire your body through the shot before the club you know that classic impact position of a professional golfer is everything's turned through and the club head is lagging we can't do that we can't hit the ball like a professional we couldn't hit the ball like a professional when we were 30 so we're certainly not going to do it when we're 60 or 70. What he says is the amateur, the older amateur, gets their speed from their arms and they square the club face with their hands and because they've been playing golf 30 or 40 years they know how to do that. So even if you stand a little open you can still swing a little out and hit your draw. But I honestly wish that pros wouldn't teach a draw to somebody who's losing distance. Because all you're doing is lowering the ball flight, you're lowering the carry. And as Jack Nicholas was said when he was asked why does he hit the ball high, he said because air has less resistance than dirt. So if your ball is going to the ground early because you've got everything closed down, you've got your loft shut down, you're not going to hit it as far as the guy who can stand a little open, can swing, he's now got room to swing his arms as quick as he can, because we're all still reasonably strong, and can actually get through the shot and point his belt buckle at the target. So if you're getting old and you're a bit stiff and you're losing distance and you're losing height, you're losing carry, there's exercises that can be done. Stretching, with a 20 ounce club or one of these heavy things, they're not that expensive really. You know, a couple of dozen of very, very cheap golf balls, that's all they cost. Get something heavy, swing it in control. Do your stretching exercises in front of the TV and get that tiny bit open, not that big bit close. Because the other thing with losing height with this close stance and this strong grip. You can't get over fairway bunkers anymore. You can't get over that ditch that crosses the middle of the fairway. And because you're landing your iron short so far short of a green to run it in, you're running into all the front bunkers. If you can get open, you can get your height back, then you take hazards out of play and you'll enjoy your golf more. But seriously, go get those Harvey Pennant books and have a read and you'll be surprised how many of the little parables he teaches in those books apply to us. Ta-ra!